Yeah, baby. Oh, remember that? Oh, a classic. Huh? We're bringing it back. A little throwback. <laughs> okay. Yeah, little Dude, well, throwback. you know what? For old time's sake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You threw a retro kit on. I did a retro intro. You okay. feel me? So, but no, do the do it for real. Okay. The, no. <laughs> it was too much. It's too much on the throat. Okay. Ooh, too much on the throat. Go back. Go back to uh, you know, some of the old episodes. How many episodes. of our fans have heard that? <laughs> Not go back many. to the old episodes. Not unless your moms are listening. <laughs> okay, okay. He's getting too crazy too fast. Um, <laughs> Oh, this is supposed to be a proper episode. So is there an MLS Cup oh, final yeah, preview? Oh, yeah, have MLS Cup final player on. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, shout out. Uh, Julian, ignore the beginning of the show. Yeah. Uh, but uh, shout out to Julian Grasso, who will be joining us shortly of the Columbus crew to That's talk about, right. uh, you know, how he's preparing for the MLS Cup final. Mm. Uh, you, you, I think most players need to prepare by joining us on the show. The ones that don't join us on the show, I don't know. Not you a ain't good sign. that prepared, bro. You ain't that prepared. Okay? Maybe you just don't care about MLS Cup. Maybe <laughs> okay. it's not that important to you. <laughs> we have figured it mm. out, everybody. Maybe you're a bigger fan of League's Cup. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, hello, everybody. Welcome to the Cooligans. It's the Cooligans, buddy. As always, my name is Cristian Polanco. That's right. I'm Alexis Guerrero. We out here uh exciting episode obviously Ju julian gressel will be joining us in a bit but we gotta we got a lot to discuss mm. because we have to we we have to give people a, a little uh, a little breakdown a little preview of what's going on what's gonna happen right. in this mls cup final that's why people we, tune into this show bro we put the anal in analysis bro <laughs> <laughs> we, <laughs> <laughs> okay, the, vo the, voice <laughs> the voice you're hearing is That's me, guys, oh, our, our, produ our producer, <laughs> Miguelito. Bro. The who word anal is in analysis. <laughs> who's oh just who's ta taking aback, really? <laughs> that one, a normally I'm like, prepared for what Alexis is going to say. I did not know what that was coming. You know what? I Nothing shocks me anymore. I just have to. Christian uh, is just like numb Christian's to the, it all. He's yeah, like, yeah, dead whatever. behind the eyes. He's, done, like, I, oh, he's doing it again. I've done enough improv classes to go you just gotta yes and it <laughs> you gotta yes and his ridiculousness yes and it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway get it anyway uh yes uh, we're excited to talk about this mls cup final but we have to start with some uh unfortunate news mm. uh, uh with lafc one of the the two teams the two remaining teams in major league soccer daddy uh, garber said get down from there <laughs> okay you're having too much fun <laughs> The, we all saw the. We spoke about it the other day. I was there. The, the flares. You were. You were in the smoke. I you, was in the smoke. You got dog. all the smoke. Shout it's out just to all the smoke <laughs> joining. Hey, Stephen Jackson, Metal Arc yeah, Media, yeah. Matt Barnes joining. Joining us. They they saw that the Cooligans joined Metal Arc Media. We saw how much fun we were having. And they were like, "Yo, we gotta get on board, bro." bro. They said, did, "Did he say put anal in the <laughs> This is this, my kind of network. This is the home I want to be a part of. <laughs> you know. <laughs> anyway, okay. We we also get. Unreasonably upset at Derek Fisher too, bro. Facts, bro. <laughs> I'll drive his house right now. <laughs> We're on the same team, dog. We're on the same page. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, LAFC, uh, they got a uh, a fine. This is uh, of sanctions, really. Dude, a hundred k. So real uh, money, not real, game, real, not, not game. Game. <laughs> Okay. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> no, they, give me a hundred k right now. A hundred real dollars. Yo, uh, for a hundred thousand real dollars for uh, for the flares, and so essentially, uh, MLS put out uh, this statement. Uh, it says uh, Major League Soccer today announced uh, sanctions against Los Angeles Football Club following serious misconduct by the LAFC fan supporter group 3252 prior to the Audi MLS Cup playoff match against Houston on December Serious 2nd. misconduct. Uh, hold on, Christian. Serious misconduct. Serious. Damn, when man. you hear that, what do you think happened? <laughs> I'm saying I, I think about how the election was rigged. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Bro, you know, this is serious like misconduct. <laughs> What what happened? Was the thirty two fifty two in contact with Russia? <laughs> Bro, we need to see the documents. What is the serious misconduct? Is Hunter Biden part of the three two five two? Where was his laptop? <laughs> was it anywhere near the thirty two fifty two? Serious misconduct. This is uh. This what is was the serious misconduct? The. I, 
the smiles on all the faces at, at oh, BMO I don't Stadium. Know. <laughs> the atmosphere that you will use a photograph of to sell season tickets. <laughs> My man, it's going to be on the match day program real soon. Wow. Some of the fans held up a stick that smoke came out of. <laughs> so, look, we are, oh, so How dare you? Let's, let's uh, you know, let, I'll be the, the, the uh, quote unquote bad guy here. And oh, let's, dad, uh, dad's here. <laughs> let, let, <laughs> <laughs> so, and let's try to think of MLS's perspective and, and you understand uh safety that's a that's also a factor uh maybe it's maybe it's a, a more of a factor of like they don't want to get sued if something happens something along those lines i don't know but when you see a a hundred thousand dollar fine for lafc obviously that puts so much pressure on the club to be like all right guys we that's it we had kind of our fun but i think this is the uh, the end of it but the thing that's frustrating is that this isn't the first time that either the 3252 or even other clubs have used smoke. So I don't understand why this, this fine seems so, so excessive. $100,000 to be like, all right, that's it. Not happening again. Do, do not ever even think about doing this again. It's, it's trying to send a message. So I don't know where that sort of... Uh, uh, aggression and aggressiveness is coming from Major League Soccer. I also just think it's like, you know, it's it's... It's herb mentality. Herb mentality, right? bro. Hall right. monitors. Yeah, yo, facts. It's a little <laughs> dusty. It makes you look dusty. Wait, did you say bro. herb or herb? Herb. H E R B. Okay, herb. I'm familiar with herb, but you know the it's herd mentality. That's why I said <laughs> herb <laughs> mentality. I thought that was a classic. It was a play on words, bro. <laughs> Sorry, I forget you guys are comedians. I feel sometimes. like you're you know over I mean? analyzing <laughs> what I'm saying. You're really not. <laughs> I'm not fitting into this. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I can't do on the morning show. <laughs> um, I feel like this is this is the wrong response. You know what I mean? I don't know from watching it, other than the three-minute delay. Oh, my God, three minutes. Right, what are we right. possibly going to do besides run 18 more commercials for Apple? <laughs> for the Apple Plus uh, subscription package, Apple TV Plus. Um, outside of the three-minute delay, which really, again, we don't have broadcasters, so I don't think that that's that big of an issue. Right, it's your network. You own the whole thing. Well, no, I mean the game was also broadcast on Fox, so it's yeah. Not but what three minutes delay is nothing. They tell you the game starts today. It really mean, starts at like eight seventeen. It's whatever, 32. but it's a, you can talk, chalk it up to stoppage time, right? It's not. It's not yeah, that yeah, big a deal. That's what I mean. Yeah, it's yeah. already kind of a, a little bit of a of a wiggle room in there. Um, wiggle room, great name for a nightclub. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just oh, thought of I've it. danced there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How about giggle room comedy club? Right now, all right now we're brainstorming. Forget the whole soccer thing. Yeah, Let's forget go to the podcast. What are we doing? Uh, I was like, we need to do a quarterly analysis. And they're like, Alexis, you have to stop with business people. Well, how about the the, the Rob Riggle room? Uh, the, wow. the comedy club owned by Rob Riggle. <laughs> so, just trying to have, it was a good bit. It was a good time. bit. Trying it wasn't to, a bad bit. I'm trying to get away from the anal stuff. You know, just trying to be cute. All right, all right. I've you've heard that before. That's like someone's last post on OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get away from the handle stuff. I just want to be cute. Um, but the point I'm trying to make is uh, now, of course, why take me serious? But the point I'm trying to make is you as a league had a moment to sit back and say like, wow, the reaction to this is overwhelmingly positive, obviously, besides other fans. They're like, how come we didn't get to do it? Other than that, it, it was kind of the, the pictures looked dope. The, the vibe was dope. The atmosphere, again, I was there. The atmosphere was great. Maybe it was an opportunity to like readjust what the rules are and be like, oh, okay, this reminds me a lot of, again, when they penalized, uh, and I didn't make the joke, Mike, when they penalized <laughs> LA Galaxy for the, the shooting star shooting meme. Shooting star's meme, And yeah. now that's, like, encouraged. And, you know, media teams are sort of not just encouraged, but, like, taught how to make things a bit more viral and how to do, how to make these things and how do we get the audience engaged more this was one of the, this is one of those opportunities where i feel like you dropped the ball you reacted a little too quickly in a way that's a little too mom and daddish you know what i mean yeah and again it's herb mentality yeah i don't get i mean look the it's a hundred thousand dollar fine and then also uh, some of the specifics uh to the to the sanctions are uh, that LAFC will be subject to league oversight related to security and supporter management processes. Uh, for the 2024 season, 3252 will have all supporter privileges indef in indefinitely suspended pending the completion of uh, MLS and LAFC's comprehensive review. Supporter privileges for 3252 attending MLS Cup this Saturday uh, will also be restricted. And it's a, it is, I, I mean, it is just, the, the complete like lockdown of, of just oversight 
We're going to hold your hand through everything. We're going to make sure that you're not uh, uh, doing anything wrong. This also feels a little bit of like this investigation or whatever feels a little bit like uh, trying to get people to rat on uh, on other people, like or supporters. I'm like, oh, that's already like mad corny. Um, so this it's just look, I under I, I would have understood like for for the optics of it of like, OK, we got to do the suspension because. I don't know. I, I get the fine. I, yeah, like, we're gonna fine you, but I mean, the don't do it again, pow pow. Right. The fine. The fine should have been like ten grand, like a little slap on the wrist. Yeah. Be like, don't do it, but like, can we figure out? Can we go through the tape and figure out how many thousand that is per flare? Because <laughs> I honestly just think it was like fifteen flares. Yeah. I mean, you were there. I guess you would have a better idea. But yeah. uh, you think I was counting flares? <laughs> <laughs> so guys, I, can we stop the game for a second? <laughs> that's what I do for too. fun because I'm neurodivergent, <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody hold hold up the flares a little higher. Friend. No, it's a um it, it just seems look again, it seems so so excessive and I don't know like what the direction is because look, we we watch Bundesliga matches. We watch, you know, team Tur- Turkey Champions League. League Mike, on. can you Google soccer flare safety concern? Because sure. <laughs> what is it? Is it just because it's in it? In it's a, on like, fire. Yeah. Well, not really. It's just producing smoke. Right. Yeah. It's, it's not, not actual it's not, fire. It's out. Uh, yeah. But there's. It's not a flame. I mean, I've seen. Um, I guess I'm thinking about like the canisters that shoot the 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 smoke. Yeah, it's not like no one's holding up a sterno. You know those little light up things on the bottom of a sterno. Those get really hot. I mean, I'm looking at this thing. It says that the flare can reach up to like 2,000 degrees, like the edge of it. So I guess the concern is that just like if it's in like with a bunch of people, if someone even touches it, they could get seriously injured. I have no idea. Yeah. I feel like if it's okay for paintball, it should be okay. <laughs> That's where they come from. They're paintball things. Uh okay yeah you you light a flare. I mean I also think of like a, a roadside emergency. Those yeah. those flares. Those aren't the flares you hold up. <laughs> you don't. Why hold, not? You don't hold up the the <laughs> pull over and help you with a flat flare. I don't even think that produces smoke. It does produce smoke. Yeah, but not like not that. Not a smoke I'm flare. Not, I'm not on top of flare technology. <laughs> you know I don't know how it works. But you I'm don't just go to flare. Big flare. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This kid's holding up an incense. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> like, smells good, no? Yeah. <laughs> that was my rosemary. Yeah, is that sandalwood? Uh, we're, <laughs> what? Uh, we're trying to set an intimidating atmosphere, not get people to relax. It's just <laughs> lavender and yeah. right He's got now. the little skateboard sticky thing they put it on, <laughs> holding it up the whole thing. I'm, look, I, the, the Seattle Sounders will be threatened by m- m- my supporter yeah. antics. He's like, by the way, guys, I'm selling crystals after the match. <laughs> Everyone's cool with it. Uh, okay. I'm doing the halftime show. It's a hacky sack competition. These are crystals for ultras. Yeah. <laughs> Exclusively. Uh, so, so look. It's crystals a- for ultras. <laughs> it's so awesome. I can't wait. Bro, I'm going to start doing infomercials. I seen on TV, bro. So, it's unfortunate um, because it, it, it sort of forces us to ask sort of the questions about... Um, what do we want MLS supporter culture to look like? How much freedom do we want the fans to have? But also, do we have to keep fighting MLS to try to make them cooler? It's like, bro, I mean, you yeah, know what I the mean, blueprint they, is, dog. Yeah, they look, the fans are showing you what's cool. And yeah. you're like, nah, don't be cool. It's like a divorced dad who's going on their first date and refuses to wear the jeans or teenage kids are telling him to. <laughs> it's like, you can't wear God, Stop tucking your shirt in. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so fascinating. We're never going to get a mom this way, dude. <laughs> dad, you're scaring the hoes. Yeah, nah. <laughs> Yo, your Riz game on zero, dad. That's MLS, bro. That's MLS. MLS got no Riz. <laughs> no. I hate to say it, but. You're Rizless, dog. Riz- <laughs> Was in Seattle. That's the name of the movie they're gonna make about you, bro. Don Garber. <laughs> in We're Seattle. just trying to help, uh, bro. We're trying to help. We're uh, trying to get your fingers wet. You feel me, man, bro? That's when we know. This is where the part of the clip we cut off. We don't show that part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get, <laughs> that's just on the episode, bro. You hey, gotta really add a little B roll to that. <laughs> okay. Don't show the hand movements. We don't need it. 
It doesn't <laughs> help the imagery. Yeah. Right. Shouts to everyone who sees British people throwing the middle finger up and go, hey, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Two fingers up like that, huh? So, uh, <laughs> all right. Well, so we'll get to uh, Julian in, in a moment. I, we, uh, what I, kid says, I want my dad to get his fingers up? <laughs> that is disgusting. You guys are right. Very bad, one. yes. Um, <laughs> let's just, r- real quick, before we uh, uh, chat with Julian Gressel of the Columbus crew, let's, <laughs> let's do something to cleanse the palate. Yeah. <laughs> let's, uh, let's talk some Premier League uh, real quick because there were some. Uh, uh, wild uh, results, mainly, uh, you know, Manchester City. We're ju- we're used to just seeing them absolutely dominate uh, uh, the Premier League, just dominate Europe. We we're all, we're used to them only giving up the ball after they've scored. That's <laughs> right, the other right, time right. the other team gets a carry. <laughs> well, it's we'll, back to the center we'll circle. We'll let you have it after Fine. we put it behind your goal. You keeper. carry it, to the, but then <laughs> give it back to us as soon as the whistle blows. But Manchester City are uh, are are falling off, bro. I don't know what's going on because they Beyond. just they just lost. Uh, you know, obviously they drew. To uh, Tottenham uh, the, uh, over the weekend, and then they played midweek against Aston Villa, which in these midweek matches, you know, only what three, four days off. Mm-hmm. You can understand, like they're not gonna, you know, may, may not dominate, but you know, but it's City. And then when it comes to uh, who they have on the bench and 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 the depth, you you're not particularly worried. But Manchester City against Aston Villa uh, yesterday was arguably the maybe. The worst game I've seen Manchester City play in probably about five years. So the running joke is, for this match, this is what happens when, uh, whatchamacallit, Manchester City starts six defenders. That's like the the running joke I keep hearing. And if you want to pull up their lineup, Mm -hmm. uh, I, I see five. So yeah, obviously uh, their back line is three: Gavardio, yes, and Kyle Walker. Kyle Walker in front of them in mm. in midfield. Remember, we were giving him so much credit, Pep Guardiola. It's like, bro, he makes John Stones run in as a center back, and he's just as good at midfielder. Well, he started him in the midfield, yeah, and then he put a Kanji in there. I guess Rico Lewis would be your yeah. Other they're defender? counting Rico Lewis as a yeah. defender. Um, this did not work. It did not uh, work at all. John Stones also. Look bad, right? He made a, a, a couple mistakes, lost the ball in 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 kind of bad areas. Or so this is the Trent Alexander conundrum. Okay, <laughs> Trent Alexander is a okay defender, but an amazing midfielder. Right. When he starts as a defender and then runs in the midfield, and everyone's like, "Wait, who's supposed to cover him up here?" Because mm-hmm. now you have space. But when you already, it's like, you know, when someone's like, bro, you so funny, you should be a comedian. Hey, I'm the funny one. I should be a comedian. Go ahead. Get on stage. <laughs> Do it. Let's Daddy. see how that works. <laughs> now you're alone. You got the microphone. All spotlights on you. Mm-hmm. Not, not so easy anymore, is it there? Funny guy by the copy machine. <laughs> right? That's the conundrum. John right. Stones, hilarious on that back line. <laughs> oh, man. Sometimes he runs up. He says the wildest things at lunch. <laughs> But then he stepped up to the plate, got on stage at the midfield, and was like, "Screw, whoa, <laughs> well, I, and Dad, I, you suck." <laughs> I wonder why. I mean, I, I don't know if Stones has been dealing with any injuries. He hasn't played that much this season, yeah. uh, as far as you know, as far as the uh, center back pairings or you know whatever the rotation is. It's usually Akanji, Nathan Ake. Nathan Ake was severely missed in this game. Yeah. yeah. Um, Diaz and Gavardi all are the other two. So I feel like John Stones doesn't even really have a, like a spot left. He's like kind rotation. of, yeah, he's a little bit kind of odd man out. Meanwhile, this guy was super essential in the uh, in the Champions League. Yeah. Without a doubt. And also, you know, former Everton legend, uh, John Stones. <laughs> yeah. That's that's what I think everyone remembers <laughs> him <laughs> for. Not going to remember him for the treble. They yeah, will remember right? him no. for his time at Everton. <laughs> uh, I saw him play in Istanbul and the whole time I'm like, Man, he was good at everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> we should stop the game and talk about this. <laughs> but the um, I want to give you a little little tidbit here, a little nugget. Go mm, for it. Mm. Uh, Aston Villa had twenty more shots than Man City in yeah. the win last night, that's which is crazy, right? Twenty two, mm-hmm. City two. Uh, that's the most that a Pep Guardiola team, a Pep Guardiola team, have been outshot by in a match in the big five European leagues. I'm pretty sure that's as manager and player. Five hundred thirty five. Wow. Game straight. Yeah. Not been outshot by 20 goals. And I think the time he did was when he played for Dorados in Mexico. <laughs> I honestly do believe that's when the last one was. Uh, Aston Villa have won 10 of the last 15 in the Premier League this season. Their most victories at this stage of a league campaign since 1980, 1981 season <laughs> when they won their title. <laughs> 
Bro, this is a, like a, 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 first of all, Unai Emery is doing an incredible job. Absolutely incredible job. They are amazing at home. They've won 15 straight at home. That's, that's The wild. last time they lost at home, Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> Who do they play next? Arsenal. Time to start that clock again, boys. <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, you, if you look at, when you look at the shop map uh, for... If, you, if this was in black and white, you'd assume it was in reverse, no? <laughs> I don't know. Was Castevilla almost relegated like two seasons ago? <laughs> this, yeah. is, this is so crazy. I mean, you, the, the, like I said, I think this is the worst game uh, Manchester City have played in a very, very long time. They looked like a championship club playing a Premier League club. They couldn't, they couldn't maintain possession. They couldn't really figure anything out uh, uh, going forward. Um, they, it just, it was. I couldn't. I honestly could not believe just the the, the mistakes uh, uh, being made. The I thought the changes. The subs were crazy. I'm like, these are regens. I've never heard these men <laughs> before, bro. I I think it was. I, look, because of the the you know the the wild game they had against Tottenham, you mm -hmm. could imagine maybe there's a fatigue issue. That that that's my first thought. I'm like, I couldn't figure out why they just looked so. Uh, uh, Uncoordinated. Uncoordinated is great, like lacking ideas. They were unsure. I mean, also, what's what's my guy's name again? Uh, McGinn. What, this McGinn? guy? John McGinn. Wow. I thought I was. That was team of the season, McGinn. I think that's who came out the <laughs> locker was, room. I, that was McMessy, bro. Bro, facts, bro. <laughs> my man, I couldn't. I mean, I know he's good. He's good on the yeah, ball. But Cristiano he, McNaldo <laughs> came out on that, bro, on that left wing, bro. McGinn, I, just, I love the way he plays. He has a very unorthodox style of dribbling. He kind of like. He ha when he has the ball and he uses that cake. He uses the cake. He uses the cake the, to get the plays. The, the shoulders. 100%. He's but he does a thing. There's something when when is Aaron McGinn? What's his first name? John. No, John, John McGinn. John. When he has the ball, he does a little bit of a thing of like he looks like a paranoid. Like he, he looks like um. Like Gollum from, uh, from he hunches. He hunches. He's like, yeah. Whoa, no, my, this ball he is mine. He goes goblin mode. This ball, <laughs> he this, goes goblin this mode. This ball is mine. Nobody's yeah. touching this ball. Like mm. whatever. He get, he gets like there's just something where people cannot figure out why he does the like, scared cat thing with his back. You know what I mean? Like yeah, a scared yeah, yeah. cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, it's just like a, it's fascinating. But yeah. and but he's like oh, such a technical dribbler in small spaces, but with but with the hunch, and he's just like, he also no. like. Is, is not that fast, but he's like wily. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he gets out of, there's like three defenders. You know those cartoons where like everyone fights and the guy who started the fight just crawls yeah. out, right, of, right, out yeah. of the smoke? <laughs> and, but the smoke is still going. That's what That's happens McGinn, to him. bro. He just say he's always. Three Manchester City players are hacking at each other and McGinn's not even there anymore. He's like, I don't know what they're doing over there. <laughs> I know. You watch me? I'm passing, passing it to Leon Bailey. I'd be embarrassed. <laughs> and Leon Bailey down the clock back, bro. Dude, I mean, look, there they was. <laughs> you look like M. Da R out there. <laughs> <laughs> Two reggae legends. Yo, shout, yo. <laughs> Bailey says, yo, play the rhythm, bro. <laughs> because even Bailey, there were a couple moments in the game where I'm like, yo, dude, this is time to pass. You should pass this one. Well, look, he's very selfish. Even on his goal, I'm like, you know he ain't going to pass. That's, right, but, right. Hey, the deflection certainly helped. But it was still on frame, so that should have counted as a goal, right? It did. Yeah, it, it did. did. It, it, it was his yeah. goal. Ollie um, Watkins also doing a good job of agitating Manchester City players, yeah. getting under their skin. Douglas du Louise was doing the same thing. Bro, I watched I watched this game. If Douglas Louise had a finished product, if he could actually score, yeah. Yeah. oh my God. I know he's like on the list for Arsenal. Arsenal are rumored to be very hot on the trail for Douglas Louise. This guy looks like a baller. Mm -hmm, I yeah. mean, he in those moments where they everyone else is playing up to his level, really, I mean, it's absolutely incredible. He reminded me the whole team, really, but there were moments. Um, who's the dude? Kamara looked good. Yep. Uh, who's the other dude? Uh, oh, Yuri Tillemans. Yo, Tillemans. Oh my God, this dude! I was like, bro, he doesn't get that many starts either, right? I don't right, think right. the beginning he of hasn't this been playing that much. He though. has been balling out though. I was just, I was shocked because, you know, like the home crowd sometimes can carry momentum. The one team, I'm an Arsenal supporter, but still, the one team you would pick to be like, you could defuse. A, a spirited home crowd that's mm -hmm. willing their team to play better is Manchester City, and they could not. Yeah. Villa Park is an absolute fortress. Well, when you look at the the, su I was also kind of confused about the subs because I didn't know because yeah, you never heard of Oscar Bob. No I one's ever heard of Oscar, Oscar Bob. Bob. Is just definitely <laughs> like, <it's> two guys. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, uh, Mateus Nunes and uh, Mateo uh, Kovacic. Kovacic, and then so, but you wonder, I'm like, why didn't 
Grealish play, and I was like, oh, he, he had the he, suspension. He has the suspension. Rodri didn't play. Suspend. He has this is. I think that was the third. Uh, and then Jeremy Doku. Mm-hmm. I was also wondering like, why didn't? Yeah, he was dealing with an injury. So the and De Bruyne is, I think, just started training, if I'm not mistaken. So when you look when you look at these these the the players on the bench, I'm like, Pep only made three subs, mm-hmm. and it's like nobody else was gonna make a difference in this game. Just no. But I will say, bro. Calvin Phillips still can't get minutes. Yeah, man. Yeah. What a shame. Yeah, they, they have to put 42 defenders before they're going to put Calvin Phillips in the, <laughs> in the game. Midfield. It's crazy. They're like, yo, Calvin, do me a favor. Sit down. Listen, we got one of the grounds crew guys. <laughs> now, I just don't want He's his first time. I don't want you getting <laughs> in his way. <laughs> don't be offended. <laughs> My no. man, he's put in the work. <laughs> wow. You're upset? <laughs> wow. We'll let his family know, Calvin. <laughs> So uh, that's uh, a kind of a, a wild scenario, and I don't think we've seen that in a while with Manchester City, where the the Completely I just mentioned outplayed. their depth. I mean, I mean like it's just nobody could could have changed this game at all, no. and, they, and they and they but that's really it. They were so played off defense, the pitch. They they could not. So uh, unfortunate, but uh, now we're in a, in a weird spot where Manchester City is like dropping all these points. Everybody, you know, Arsenal uh, uh, confident, but then it's like all don't right, don't scroll up. Hold on, don't scroll up. I want you to guess how many points. Remember how bad a season Manchester United is having? Yes. How many points away from City do you think they are right now? Oh, I, I think they're only one point or two points. Three points. Three, Three. points. Okay. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Well, th- I think somebody was uh, making that point on on Twitter. And they're basically saying like uh, Man United and Tottenham are, are are Tottenham points, but Man United are having. It's like the, the the team the club is finished and having yeah, a terrible yeah, season yeah. and and Tottenham, Tottenham like what a what a what wonderful a, what a wonderful story what a great yeah. club they're <laughs> back and forth and it's like they're tied on points yeah so uh, yeah so it's a it, it's a it's just kind of wild where now it, it feels like Manchester City is not going to be the threat at the end of the season it might end up being we Arsenal or Liverpool I was gonna say they've got you right where they want exactly. you right now but as six, soon as those charges dropped last season they went undefeated <laughs> yeah. Uh, Interesting. Maybe I, I, this is all like you know head games by Pep Guardiola to create a little bit of a of an underdog story. Mm. Yeah. He's like, you know what I'll do? I'll start eight defenders. See what happens. <laughs> Guess what? John Stone, you're in goal. <laughs> Best a, of luck. There's a lot of defenders on there, bro. It's kind of wild. Though. Was this the worst uniform matchup though in the history of the Premier no, League? Bro, I couldn't stand oh, it. Oh, because of the swap. Why was why was City City wearing City? red and they're, white? They're wearing the Villa's burgundy, wearing the, the burgundy and the, and cream. I guess they can't wear their home kit. Because yeah, the the, the home the kit blue. matches Aston Villa has blue yeah. on it. But, I but just, just turn, wear dude, white white shorts. I turned on the game. I was like, "Who is who?" Like I literally <laughs> yeah, did yeah. not know. It was fresh. Like when that happens on like one of those like uh, whatever on FIFA when you're playing someone else on the internet and it starts, yeah, you yeah, just yeah, like yeah. you just both yeah. rage quit. You're like, there has not. to be some uh, alternative. I, I I don't understand why they. The, the the shorts match the shirts for Aston Villa. No, it was frustrating. It was bad. You know what? You know what? I'm sure, I've never figured out how they did this. Well, I used to play a lot uh, FIFA, and they would I would play Palmeiras, who just won the yeah. Brazilian league, by the way. At halftime, they'd switch shirts. They'd get a different shirt. In FIFA, or in real in life. In FIFA. What? Was, That's yo, so at weird. halftime, they would change their shirts. Is anybody? Please, would, can anybody corroborate that? I've it never, would I play a lot of FIFA. Me. Never heard of this ever. I could not figure. I googled it. I don't know how they did it. I don't know how they did it. But only Palmeiras. Every time I played them, they would swap shirts. At the, they would change their shirts at halftime. I think it was just to make you mad, bro. <laughs> it worked. Was, never Congratulations, like, EAFC. <laughs> is it still in there? <laughs> I hope you fix, fix that glitch because that <laughs> seems like a problem. All right. Uh, let's get to... Uh, if someone can figure that out, please let me know. Let's talk to Julian Gressel mm. about this MLS. Maybe he knows. Maybe why. he knows what's going on with Palmeiras in FIFA. Um, but uh, always a reminder, uh, before we, we get Julian uh, on here, we gotta you got to make sure uh, you chill during these holidays because oh, it's going to be... Oh, you got to chill. That's uh, that, there's nothing more important. I mean, when you think of chilling, you think of the cool again. Okay. Yeah. How about this? We're about to have an interview with Julian Gressel. Why don't you open up a nice can of Coors Light, sit back, and just relax and chill? Because it's like the holidays. You exactly. Know? You're on. You're running around. You're being. No, this is a moment to as, just kick back and relax. As you are, you're drinking an ice cold Coors Light. As you're looking at the 2024. MLS match ball. Okay. Huh? Yeah, we got the <laughs> new ball up there. Right on top of the How co- do we have it? 
great question. We're not answering. <laughs> okay, you're asking too many questions. What are you a cop? Are you are you a detective of some kind? You're asking. In fact, you need to chill with these questions, bro. Your questions need to open up a crisp cold course. That line. is not questions are not what the holidays are about. No, okay? no. Yeah. Remember how your family makes you feel sometimes during the holidays? That's what you're doing to us. You got to calm down and just get one of those cool Coors Lights. It's cold lager, cold filtered, that's cold the, package. That's the move. It tests crisp, crisp and refreshing as the Colorado Rockies. Mm. All right. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> All right. So make time to chill this holiday season and reach for the beer that's made to chill. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash Cooligans. That was CoorsLight.com slash Cooligans. <laughs> Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company. Golden Colorado. Let's go. All right. Let's talk to Julian Gressel of the Columbus crew. He is. It is media day out in Columbus. Everybody's chatting with everybody. Mm. It's, it's like, uh, you know, the, the, the press junket. Yeah, uh, dude. Uh, media row. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> shout out to Julian Gressel for joining us. So here it is. Our conversation with Julian Gressel. Now, would you look at this? Bro, you know, one of the homies is playing the MLS Cup final. We got to be like, so I immediately had to be like, yo, bro, come through. This happens so often. All of our <laughs> friends just play an MLS Cup final. And we're like, wow, all of you? No, this is, this is great. We once opened a comedy festival with this man on stage with and you us. Know, and and I, if I remember correctly, that same year... He won MLS Cup. Bruh, are you saying <laughs> it's us? <laughs> so, Maybe. So we figure we you know, try to uh, c- continue pushing that good luck uh, Bro, his way. You're wearing the kit from the Columbus crew, ladies and gentlemen. A good friend of ours, Julian Gressel, everybody. Julian, what's up, man? What's up, guys? Good to see you. Obviously very happy to be on the show again. And, uh, yeah, what a better week, right? <laughs> <laughs> so much has changed. Last time you were on the show, you were at Atlanta. You had your girl at the. It's been a lot. I mean, the last time you were on the show, you were at DC United. DC that, United. That's right. right. He's twice. He's been twice, on the show before. And then uh, after that, in 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 that time, you also were Vancouver Whitecap. And but now remember the you, first time it was girlfriend. Now the guy's got a wife, a kid. <laughs> kid. You're in Columbus. <laughs> Two, Two kids. kids. Oh my yeah. god, I'm already nervous. <laughs> a lot. I, I only have one, so I got to keep I up with. I still got Julia. none, baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so a lot has changed in, in all this time. So I mean, this is where we'll start. Obviously, uh, uh, another MLS Cup final uh, for you, which is so exciting. But the the fact that. Getting to this one is, is was a little different than the last one. Uh, so how are you, you feeling being a Columbus Crew player and helping this team get to uh, another MLS Cup final? I feel good. You know, this is a good, uh, good week to be still playing. Um, it's cold outside here in Columbus. So you, you get to put a hat and gloves on every week. It's, it's nice to have that feeling um, to be one of two teams left, you know, and, and coming in. Obviously, I joined the club uh, mid-season. Um, it's never easy to just step into a club, into a team like that uh, mid-year, especially a good team that was already a good team. Um, and this was the goal. You know, this was what I envisioned. This was what I, we tried to do um, to be playing now, and and for me to be yeah able to help the team, and um, not just in the past week or in the past game, but also throughout the last couple months, um, is exactly what uh, we intended to do, what I intended to do. So. Um, yeah, it's just a special feeling, and, uh, and obviously, I'm very excited for this weekend. I'm, I'm curious, just being, but being getting to the MLS Cup final, get, being a player that arrives mid-season, and then also being a player that has, you know, I, I you know, we've we've known you for a while. We and we know you you speak pretty publicly about uh, MLS and how trades work and and how unexpected they can uh, can be sometimes. Uh, having to uproot your family, but being you're you're a veteran of this league now, and getting to uh, getting to you know a club arriving at a club mid season, but you're also bringing that veteran experience and MLS Cup experience. Is that a, a little bit different than just kind of any old player that arrives at a club? Yeah, I mean I've been through it, right? So I've I, even mid season trade. Uh, I think the past year I was part of that one as uh, or during the season I got traded as well. So. I knew what it kind of entails, right, of, of how much it is on the family, how much it is on you personally, trying to jump into a new team, new club, um, you know, get up to speed or try and get up to speed really quickly. Um, and, yeah, I've been through a lot, you know. I, I've been through a lot of my career. That also means that I'm getting older. <laughs> um, but, uh, no, it's something that, 
Yeah, we talked to some young guys this week, you know, leading up to the big games in the playoffs. Um, you know, whatever whatever the kind of group requires, I feel like I have a pretty good sense uh, for that by now. And, um, you know, this, is, this was a really good team when I first joined and, and a really good coaching staff as well that understands um, a lot of, of kind of what it takes to win. And um, that's why it was an easy transition. You know, it made it easy for me. The guys were open um, and, and all those types of things. And that, that's what makes it easy. So um, certainly a special week to kind of knowing that I've been through it as well. It's kind of like, for me, it's like, okay, here's a lot of media all of a sudden and a lot of interview requests and um, all those types of things. But um, I kind of, kind of have been through it. I'm much more relaxed than I certainly was in, in 2018. Well, that's amazing. Nah. You said you said no to everyone else, and you're like, I'm only gonna Bro. be on the Kool Aid. <laughs> Sorry, if your name ain't Kool, you're not going. You I respect all that. Week. <laughs> uh, I do want to ask. You mentioned coaching staff. I had the the luxury uh, or the 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 honor of interviewing uh, Wilfred Nancy, uh, and what I got from that is that he is so warm and soft spoken that I felt like he was talking directly to me the whole time, <laughs> and I was like, dude. Are you my dad now? Is that how this works? <laughs> Talk to me about what it's like to be coached by him, especially when you're coming in half the season. There's obviously a big adjustment. You've had a couple of different managers. Uh, what's it like? Wh- how does he react when you do something unexpected, i.e. not what he wanted? And how is he directing you into the into the MLS Cup? Is he is he detail like every single detail is he just let you be free is he arm around the arm around the shoulder kind of what what exactly does he do like talk to me a little more about wolf or nancy i think he's a little bit of everything to be honest with you he's he has a very good sense for the emotional side of a player how different players might feel in different situations how the team needs what what the team needs I think he has a very good understanding of, of the whole picture that, you know, yeah, this is a very special week for all of us. We have a ton of ticket requests, you know, families flying in from all over the, the world. We have a lot of international players and all, and it's special, you know, and he doesn't shy away from that. He doesn't shut us away, shut us off in a sense where now we have to go in hotels and um, all those things where he like, no, guys, embrace it. You deserve it. You're champions of the Eastern Conference. You, you know, with what you've achieved, you deserve to have that type of attention and that type of um, love from all your loved ones. And, and these, get, these people support you uh, throughout the whole year, for example, and, and um, you know, so embrace it. But th- at the same time, you guys are adults, and I trust that you're still going to get ready for the game um, and, and be up for it. But uh, in terms of training this week, it's been uh, similar to all the other weeks, uh, nothing too special in terms of preparation. Yeah, a little bit more uh detail oriented but that's normal you know i think it's a big game so you want to you want to have a little bit more um more of that stuff in terms of tactics and and tendencies from other from the other team and all those types of things but um again he has a very good feel for um what each individual player needs what the team needs and of understanding the situation understanding the circumstances um but at the same time enjoying the moment and Wilford's been, uh, yeah, he's been, he surprised me a lot when I first came here. I didn't know much, obviously, about him, um, but he's been a very, uh, yeah, a, a coach that I've learned a ton from on the field, but also off the field of how compassionate and how, how caring he is uh, as a, on, on a human level. You know how, like, you're, you're German, right? You know how, like, everything Germans say sound like you're getting yelled at? Right, he's French. Everything he <laughs> says sounds like smooth. You know what I mean? <laughs> is this guy? Is this guy a jazz? French English accent is amazing. I love that too. Yeah, it's so good. It just the words glide. Yeah, out of his mouth. I, I mean, th- there is a sense that he has a lot of faith and trust in his players. I mean, we saw in in, in the game against Cincinnati, and that and that hell is real derby where you guys are down two nothing. And you know who is a cucumber well, on the sideline? Like everybody's still still playing calm and comfortably on the ball. I'm I'm curious what halftime was like in that game as far as the the inspiration because that second half, you know, and and you can also talk about this because you know you you didn't start that game and I wonder what it's like as as a a, a player. You know, every player wants to start in in matches and be a big influence in the game. But you were a big influence in the game in that in that second half coming off uh, the bench. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, but it was a halftime that was, he was pretty calm, to be honest with you, because he knew that we were the better team, playing better soccer, had more chances, were 
close to scoring. That's what he said, that he felt like we were close to scoring and that we should just continue and then that we, you know, yeah, had a couple moments that they took advantage of. One was a set piece. The other one was, a, I think, a, a turnover and a counterattack. And, um, you know, then you, you find yourself 2-0 down, but at the same time we knew that, or he said that if, you, if we can get the first goal, um, that the, by the way we were playing, that we're going to get other chances and we're going to continue to keep getting opportunities. So just believe in in that and, and trust kind of the process of the game and say that, it, you know, and he said that it's a long game at the end of the day, and it was, you know. And, um, yeah, in terms of a mindset, for me, coming off the bench, obviously, you know, things aren't going the right way. You think that... Um, when you come in or, or you're hoping that you can come in and, and make an impact. Um, so you just try and try and see of, of where you can have that impact and what you can do to, to help the team when you do get a chance to step on the field. And, um, you know, that's something that obviously worked uh, in the Eastern Conference final there where I, me and Chris were able to come in and kind of change, change the game a little bit and, um, you know, help us get to, to an MLS Cup final. And that's obviously a very, very good feeling of, of kind of yeah overcoming the disappointment of not playing at first and then still being able to make an impact you know i think that kind of uh yeah speaks speaks to the group that we have where even kevin molino comes in with you know 10 minutes left and has an amazing assist or secondary assist to to the last goal you know those types of things um you need in order to win mls cup and, and that's why we're in this position because I'm, of the contributions from everybody about, I mean, in that in that second half, the, the, after that first goal, I mean, obviously it was an own goal, but it was a, the 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 pass. Uh, you know, you do, you started that that uh, sort of did like did you guys like smell blood in the water? Like what was going on? Because there was su- such an uh, uh, aggression and urgency playing away from home, playing at TQL, playing in su- playing in a derby, but it it seemed like the 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 stamina ran out. Of, of of the Cincinnati players and Columbus stole that and took the the energy that 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 should have been provided by, by playing at home because it was kind of remarkable to see just a, a tale of sort of two halves. Yeah, no, I, I think we definitely sensed that. We definitely sensed that they were getting uh, maybe a bit more tired and they didn't didn't have the energy that we had. And um, I think we were on top of the game almost the whole game. And and when you kind of continue to attack, 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 and then when you finally find the breakthrough. You're like, all right, let's, you know, we just got to keep believing and keep continuing of what we were doing. And, um, you know, that came in the 70, what was it, 72nd or something minute. Yeah. It could have come in the 48th and we would have still continued to play our way. And um, that's, I think, what I have to give the guys credit to of continuing to push and uh, not giving up. You know, there were some heads down at halftime. I'm not going to lie. You know, there were some disappointments. There's some guys that were like, oh, man, this is this could be it, you know, and. Um, but at the same time, you find a way. Um, guys stepped up again to find a way to push through adversity like that is is not easy to do, especially away from home without the the real support of of the of the whole stadium. And um, yeah, but it, it's definitely just something that we pride ourselves in to continue and push through difficult moments to, but to still play the way we we know how to play. And and that's I think something that showed, especially in that second half where. Um, once we got the first one, we definitely smelled blood in the water, and we're like, "All right, you know, we can get the second one." And I, once we scored the second one, honestly, to be honest with you, I thought we were going to score a third time right. in <laughs> normal time. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, you know, it took a little bit longer. But ultimately, you know, we got we got there, and now we're now we're in this position. It's incredible. In fact, I'm watching how you guys sort of just continue to run and run and run, and you d- would not run out of energy. While he obviously Cincinnati was starting to get gassed, I'm thinking, how does this team prepare? You know, what is it that you do? Do you do the same thing? Is it the same meal before every game? Are you like chicken and rice and, and Brussels sprouts or something? Or is it schnitzel? <laughs> what do you do? And MLS Cup. What do you do different? Uh, well, you try not to do too much different, to be honest. Um, I think it's, yeah, pretty much the same every time. On the road is a bit different than at home, obviously. Um, but uh, I don't eat meat. Uh, only fish. So on game days, I'm actually vegetarian, basically. So a lot of beans and rice for me on game days. Oh yeah, hey, bro. Okay, um, Julian Gressel's Latino okay. now. <laughs> yeah, I don't right. know if everybody heard <laughs> the news, heard the update. The Wel- new OS has dropped. <laughs> okay. Welcome aboard. Okay. Okay, Julian. <laughs> Julian. <laughs> Julian Gressel. Hey, Gressel. <laughs> okay, no, beans but- and rice. We're gonna got. We gotta get you on mofongo. 
<laughs> I would love not to before have, a game. By the way, it's gonna. I would love you. to have a, a traditional Dominican dish with Julian Gressel. A little mango. That when you are in New York, Julian, I, it's a date. We're we're going Let's out to it. a Dominican restaurant. All fried plantains, baby. Show. And we can do yes, another live show. Yes, we gotta do another live Happy show. Happy to. All right. The live show is just you eating a rocom <laughs> a rocom nandules, bro. It's just it's just a Julian Gressel <laughs> mukbang. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we just watch it. We're gonna have a bunch of Latinas standing around you going, "Mira, mira lo está comiendo todo." Um, the okay, the MLS Cup final against LAFC. Uh, you know, my my, you know, we gave our predictions and, and thoughts. I think LAFC are just such a strong defensive team. I picked you, by the way. I picked Columbus. And so I'm, my my worry is that Columbus is going to have a tough time uh, uh, scoring against LAFC. They have not given up uh, many goals uh, in the playoffs. But what's the mentality and and the preparation? Are you focused on any particular? Uh, uh, players, or you know, we we seen the Buanga, we seen the Velas. You can't give this up before no, the no, game. No, 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 strategy. I'm just saying. Show us the whiteboard, <laughs> Julian. You're what? you're our cousin now. What's no. the mentality going into playing against uh, uh, against LAFC? You know, the mentality is staying the same for us, to be honest, than what it has been, and that is focusing on the performance that we put together on the field as a team, uh, individually, yes, and as a team. And um, I think we've done pretty well all year um, when we were at our best um, and that is something that I think we want to try and do again obviously on Saturday with the fans in our back um, I think we are very good at unbalancing teams finding ways to create you know time edges to then create scoring opportunities um, I don't think there have been many games where we've been shut out um, so I think we know that if we, we play the way we know how to play that we can get chances and we can unbalance them defensively and ask some serious questions of them um, in the back. But at the same time, like you're saying, you have to be aware of, of their front, you know, three, five, six, whatever it is. And um, those are th those guys are as dangerous as they get in this league and um, as experienced as they get as well, you know, and obviously Carlos Vela and, and who, you know, you, you name all of them and they've, they've done it. And, and it's uh, um, certainly going to be a big task for us you know, to kind of stop them and, and limit their chances, limit their space. Whenever they can get out on the run, you know, it gets, um, it can get really tricky. And then you can, you can be on the wrong, wrong side of a, a Buanga not too many times in order to, con you know, not concede. So um, he's very, very good player, obviously very dangerous, very direct and, um, you know, has a, is ruthless. You know, I think that probably describes him very well in general, where they don't need many chances to score a goal. And, um, like we saw against Cincinnati, you know, you know, we can we can find ourselves down a couple of goals, and but there's also times where you might not come back all the time, even if you're playing well. Um, obviously, so we don't want to want to have that happen again, um, you know. So, yeah, it's a I think it's a very intriguing matchup, but a matchup of of a little bit of different tactical setups. Um, so I think it'll be a really good game to kind of watch and a really exciting one where a lot of good good quality players are on the field and. Um, you know, a lot of guys can make the difference in those in those instances in those big games, and we just hope that you know we can make one more play than them. And yeah. you know, well, uh, Columbus, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, has the the most goals uh, the most yeah. goals in the MLS this uh, season. So yeah, goal. I mean, I, I was going to ask that the first time you went, walked into training and you saw the tactical setup, were you like? Are we sending everybody forward? I mean, the, <laughs> the grounds crew is surrounding the opponent's box. You're sending everyone forward. Even you, you know, in the midfield where you're like, bro, this is bananas. <laughs> We're overloads no. everywhere. <laughs> Did it take you a minute to adjust or does that make it more exciting for you? It makes it exciting. But the, if you actually go into kind of the details of it a little bit, you kind of see of how, um, how balanced it still is. You know, I think we see defending um, in a way where you also defend while having the ball. Um, and if you have the ball in the right, like if you have possession at the right times and in the right space, um, then, you know, it makes the defending part really easy. So, for example, if we, you know, keep going back and forth all the time, that's not really our game. We need to kind of have control um, over the ball, possess the ball in the opponent's half to for our defense to set up so that then... One, we can win the ball right back again if if we end up losing it, or that we limit their space in order to to have a clean you know kind of transition moment or or clean or aren't able to to play out easily again once we lose the ball. So there's there's still um, 
you know, there's still a balance to this all, and it's not just you know go and attack and have fun, do whatever you want. It's right, right. It's not. It's not. Wilfred Nancy's well, not. He's not irresponsible. No, no. no but this is what I'm saying. <laughs> Julio Grasso <laughs> said it. He said, you got to defend while having the ball. This is what I tell my wife. Hey, just because I'm taking a nap doesn't mean I'm not thinking <laughs> about the stuff I'm supposed to do. Okay. I'm just, I'm, you know what I mean? I'm, doesn't I'm, I'm mean preparing. I'm not thinking about the romantic date we're about to have 100%. in about three, four weeks. I'm preparing. <laughs> That's I'm it. playing. I'm defending while attacking. <laughs> you know, well put. Uh, you know, I, I, we have a couple uh, quick questions from from fans, and uh, I'll get to that in a second. I just want to mention this because it must be, uh, and we've seen this throughout your entire career, and uh, and I, we've never really spoken about this uh, specifically. But you are a phenomenal passer. Right, and and this is something uh, I think is a, a big reason why you are part uh, uh, of the U.S. men's national team now, which uh, which uh, again, congrats. Uh, congrats. That's, been, that's been awesome to see. Um, but you are just such a, 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 a remarkable passer and can pick out people anywhere uh, in the box. The, what is this part of the game that? Where did this exactly sort of come from? And, and the, the inspiration to be this type of player to be so good at this because again as soon as you came into the game against Cincinnati there was just something different as soon as the ball was at your feet and you were sending balls into the box it was like okay this is something's about to happen yeah no I appreciate it thanks for all the kind words um but uh yeah it's something that kind of just developed over the years in Atlanta I think you know and when I started playing as a right wing back Obviously, I played under Tata Martino. I had a lot of freedom there um, with strikers like Joseph and, and Miguel Almiron to kind of um, play together with and, and off of. And, um, you know, the attention was so much on them where every time I had a little bit of, of space, then I was able to pick out a pass quite easily. And um, these guys make great runs, and I was able to, you know, kind of deliver the right ball at the right time. And, um, yeah, passing is probably, and, and picking out the right players is probably one of the strongest things in my game. Um, and that's just something that you also have to work on, you know, and, and I did did the work. I, I tried to, you know, work on different scenarios, uh, different movements, different types of crosses, different types of passes into the final third and all those things. You know, nothing just comes from nothing. You know, you're yeah. not just going to get thrown in front of TV and be good. You know, you have to Damn. work like you guys did and then you work that's your way. That's not good advice for me. <laughs> and, uh, no, but okay. you, you did the work too. So, you know, it's things Bro, like that. We're, we're the definition of failing up with yeah, Julian. <laughs> I just outlasted uh, You guys got to give yourself more credit than that. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. Build because everyone else fell apart. <laughs> Amazing. No, it's it, it's been uh, awesome uh, uh, to see that. And then and, and then doing that or oh, wearing a U.S. shirt has been uh, dope as well. But uh, we have some questions uh, from Gully Squad, This is which is our supporters group. I know Columbus has the Nordic. Uh, but we got, we got uh, some love here. Uh, this is from someone you may remember. Uh, from uh, uh, yeah, you, from uh, the old Z soccer pod, Douglas Reyes Cerrone has a question. Yeah. He says, uh, he, he's your old producer. He says, How's, how are you helping other Columbus players in the locker room prep for the game as one of the few uh, in there who's already played in an MLS Cup final before? I honestly try and keep him relaxed about it all, mostly. Um, you know, some guys have come up to me, asked me about LAFC because I've played, obviously, against them a couple times already with Vancouver this year. Um, and, you know, some guys, you can sense that it's a special week for them. So you just try and, you know, not make it bigger than it is. It is pretty big, but at the same time, it's still a 90 minute game and you try and try and get those guys to relax as much as possible. But, um, we actually have a lot of guys that have been in this situation and have played in really big games and have won some MLS cups. So, um, it's not just me who does the talking there, but, um, yeah, it's, it's trying to feel out what, what every player needs and, um, yeah, Either one guy either either try and get on him a little bit of, of trying to be like, hey, this is big, or the other guy try and like relax him a little bit and be like, hey, you know, it's just a 90-minute game. Let's just go out there, do what we do best, and then play our game. Nice. This question is from Robin Zagini. She's obviously a big Atlanta fan. She wants to know, do you miss us in Atlanta? And, of course, I think you do. <laughs> but I want, to, I want you to expand on that a little bit. And you mentioned Miguel Amiron and Joseph Martinez. What do you think you took from their game? that you watched in training, that you saw them develop? Because obviously, especially Miguel I Miron mean, continuing to have a stellar career. What do you think you took from them and that you saw in training? Oh, man. I, I mean, I wish I had their natural abilities to <laughs> do what they do. You know, it's tough to kind of take those. Um, but, yeah, no, it was it – was, honestly, for Miggy, it was his work ethic and, and his, his kind of relentlessness off the field as well where there would be times where I would walk into the facility um, and he'd be in the gym already working. 
um, and I'm just walking in, you know, and, and to see that from, yeah, probably your best player at that time was was amazing to see and kind of how he wanted that success that he has now in the Champions League um, and in England, um, you know, he how bad he wanted that and uh, that drive was, was always there for him. And for Joseph, um, it, it was probably his his emotional leadership, the way he was so high demanding from all the guys, but at the same time so um, like loving and, and, and caring. Um, but he would, you know, every time he would step on the field, it would be a different different type of person. And, and to have that kind of drive and to have that kind of, um, yeah, just emotional leadership out there. Every time we didn't have him on the field, for example, if he was hurt or suspended or whatever, it was there was a difference in our team. And you could sense that and you could feel that. And we were always a little bit flat. So he kind of raised the level for, for everybody. And, and I think to have that... Um, was super important, and I tried to take some some from that away and, and try and be like that at times, and you know not stepping out of my skin, uh, obviously at the end of the day, but um, still you know taking those types of things away. And of course, I miss Atlanta. It was an amazing time, and um, you know I look back at, at all those memories that I have there with with very fond eyes, and um, always put the smile on my face going going back, thinking back, and, and all that. So hi, Robin. Right. Nice. I also have a feeling that's where the, uh, the rice, the arroz con frijoles came from. <laughs> Maybe some of the time with Miggy and Joseph, you know what I mean? Well, I would have I guessed it might have been like Joseph Martinez's like squat workout routine because my, 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 my man could jump higher than almost anybody yeah. in yeah. MLS. So it's a nice person to send uh, passes to, uh, uh, yep. you know, in, inside the box. This is the last question. This is from uh, MJ Lee. Uh, she asked, what's the best part about playing for the U.S. men's national team? And also, what's the worst part? This is kind of a tough question, but, uh, you know, I'm curious because we, we spoke to you in the live show uh, we did in, in, in 2018. And we brought up the opportunity. To play we, for brought, we brought it the up. Crowd you, said, went crazy. you married an American woman. We were like, hey, dude, like, you know, maybe you play for the U.S. one day. You were like, oh, I don't know, Germany. I'm yeah. from Germany and blah, blah, blah. But now that's it. Repping the red, Stars white, and stripes, blue. bro. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. So it must be just a, a really awesome experience. But now get, getting uh, international caps and playing for the U.S. MNT. What, what, uh, what's that feeling been like so far? It's been an incredible honor. And I think that's the biggest thing to wear, like, I said it, I think, to my wife and some other friends and my family that even putting on the practice jersey with the U.S. logo on it is, is so special. When you know that, like, so many soccer players in this country that, that try and do do that, and then you you are able to be selected to, to do that. And, um, you know, it's just a tremendous honor to be, be able to represent um, this country that I've been in, lived in now for 10-plus years, and um, I call my home, and... Um, it's yeah, that's probably the best part of, of kind of just having that feeling of um, a bigger sense than like you have you have so much more to play for in a sense, right? Um, and um, you know the worst part, if I mean there isn't really a worst part, you know that it's, it's all it's all fun and, and and it's really exciting and it's you know when you when you getting, don't get called up, that's the worst part. Yeah, that's I guess yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or, or, or you know being away from the family. I guess that. You know, if I had to pick one, but you make that that sacrifice is is nothing compared to um, yeah to to other things, uh, what other families do in this in this country, and, and and this is something being able to represent the U.S. and playing for the U.S. men's national team is a, a, a huge huge thing for me, and, and makes me really proud of of kind of what I've done in this career and um, how far I've I've taken this um, this thing. To be honest with you. It's amazing, it's dude. It's beautiful We're, to watch. I, I, incredibly proud of you. Happy for you. Dude, best of luck uh, this Saturday. MLS Thank Cup you. final, 4 p.m. Eastern time. Can't wait to watch. Uh, Columbus crew against LAFC is going to be super, super cool. Uh, Julian Gresso, seriously. Uh, Julio Gresso. <laughs> <laughs> we, we are we are friends. We are fans of you. Uh, and just seriously, best of luck uh, this weekend, bro. Always rooting I for you. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. All right. Take care, brother. Shout out to my man, Julian Gracel. Wow. <laughs> just to the Gracel family. The Gracel. We see you out here making, uh, making the con con, the right, raspa. Bro, you I, know put, I, mean? I put an accent mark over his E. <laughs> yeah. right? so, Gracel. Gracel. <laughs> All right. So, uh, shout out to Julian. Look, again, best of luck uh, to Columbus crew. Uh, you know, uh, at hey, the MLS I Cup final. Uh, so go and enjoy. It's going to be a good game nonetheless. I'm excited. Hey, you know what you should do? You should count 100,000 at the sideline. Just to <laughs> let LAFC know. 
<laughs> y'all will pay that for you. Yeah, yeah, take yo, you. Let me know if you, yo, I know you <laughs> need the money down right now. You seem to be struggling a little bit right now, okay? So, no. You know what you do, do? You take LAFC's girl shopping. You know what I mean? Really Post flex. it on your Instagram stories. Yeah, dog. <laughs> Racks out, bro. Uh, so, yeah, uh, MS Cup is going to be dope to, uh, December 11th, 4 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, so uh, make sure to uh, watch that. Um, all right, we got to get to uh, uh, your favorite segment, everybody's favorite segment, Tide 5. Hey. Tide 5. We are back. I haven't done it the past few weeks. Tide 5 took a little yeah, break. Yeah, we had some interviews. Because we, we were off for Thanksgiving, and then we did the, the trivia challenge last week. That's, That's right. right. That's so we got, uh, we got, uh, we're back with a Tide 5. So we got five new topics just for everyone who doesn't know. One minute on each topic, going to ring the bell, and then you react with some jokes. Let's go. All right. So we got the first five for today. Number one, Santos has been relegated from the Brazilian Serie A. This is first time in 111 year uh, history, bro. If you had a uh, literally over a century of success, and uh, and then you get relegated, I mean, it is a it, it hurts because and you can see we're looking at the face of of, of one of the fans. Uh, if you're watching There's the tears scrolling the down the broadcast face. of 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 this was just literally one of the saddest things I've ever seen. I mean, they are absolutely I mean in shock, miserable. Uh, and Bro, it, Pele played for this team, and Neymar dude, played for this the team. But the the announcer, yo, shout out to the Paramount Plus announcer because he was just like, yo, on on the on the year that. That Pele dies this <laughs> team. I'm like, bro, why Damn. are you bringing that? <laughs> bro. Making it heavy, bro. You, know, you need to remind everybody. Was that Andre Cordero? <laughs> <laughs> my guy needs to chill. I oh could not God. believe it, dude. All right, next one, next one. Luis Suarez will be joining Inter Miami. Maybe he can get in on that new Genix commercial we've been pitching <laughs> for the past few months. Actually, there's been an update. You know what won't be joining him? His knees. His knees are going to be staying in Brazil. <laughs> staying in Brazil at the doctor's office. <laughs> My guy, how many games over under? How many games is Luis Suarez gonna play? Well, he just scored in his final game for for Gremio. Yeah, great. but he gets injections before every game. Bro. <laughs> I don't even think half them injections are legal in bro, America. You couldn't, you couldn't have paid me enough money to reveal that information that he revealed. The one where he said that he can't he can't play with his kids because his knees uh, are hurting bro. too much. I'm like, yo, I am dying with that information. <laughs> I'm not messing up the bag. Yeah, but nobody. Exactly. Uh, oh, no, don't let them know until the contract is signed. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm 38, but my knees are 16. Yeah, no. <laughs> bro. Get, I had them replaced. <laughs> I had a clone built in Argentina. I, I'm good. Or I'm Uruguay. Not revealing that to anybody, Damn, bro. bro. Yo, your knees is dusty. So it's gonna look real bad on Inter Miami if if he if, if has an injury or misses games or whatever. Like, the, the, there has to be a. I, I don't know how much they're gonna pay him necessarily. It may not be a, an incredible, insane investment. He's just gonna. I don't know. Let's all <laughs> chew on it. <laughs> you got a few months to think about it. All right. Frank Lampard or Dean Smith have both been rumored to take the Charlotte FC job. We got more British people coming over to MLS. Guys. Bro. <laughs> this is uh, Dean Smith never played for NYCFC. <laughs> he Dean won't even Smith be the most popular Dean Smith in North Carolina, bro. He'll never yeah, facts, be the most bro. popular. <laughs> Dean Smith don't know Jack Harrison, bro. We don't want you <laughs> right here, dog. So, look, this is a, an interesting move because Charlotte are in a little bit of... Uh, you know, their time in Major League Soccer, obviously, they, they, they qualified for the playoffs, but lost to Red Bull in the wild card. But then even just making the wild card, I'm like, oh, that's not that great. Like, nah. you're not... That nothing to flex bro, about. What if we did the math? It's like sixty-five percent of the league gets in, bro. You ain't doing nothing. Out <laughs> so of I'm present. a little bit worried about Frank Lampard, even if if he does get the job. There's also Robin Frazier and 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 Freddie Juarez, uh, assistant at yeah. Seattle. They are also been. Uh, um, yeah, but uh, we ain't talking about them. Who would you prefer, Lampard or Dean Smith? Out of those two, um, I mean, I, I guess I we know Lampard a little bit better. Lampard is vibes, bro. The, 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 the vibes would be better, obviously, uh, coming uh, after leaving Everton and stuff like that. Who's got a better Rolodex? Who's got better contacts than they phone? Ooh. Lampard. Lampard, probably. All right, next one. Trent, your ass was out in the field, my guy. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> he did this on purpose, to too. I don't even know. I'm not, are we allowed to show? I mean, they show this on the broadcast, but they can show it on YouTube. Yeah, I mean, man. My sometimes you got to air it out. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? Just, it's just us two dudes next to a man's butt crack yeah, right now yeah, on and, YouTube. And <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Okay. Where is it? Is it over here? Okay. <laughs> uh, I Look, the fact that they showed this on air is the funny part to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. 
But bro, man, we've all had that, right? It's cold out there. I don't get it, but you know when it's hot. Sometimes you gotta, yeah, you, <laughs> you got something little. You got a whole a whole biodome <laughs> back I'm, there. I'm, I'm pretty sure there's no there's no hot place in England. No, so that, <laughs> no. Well, there is one, and we're looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's probably warm in there. But I mean, look, it's just uh, Trent, just double cheeked up Yo. on a Tuesday afternoon, <laughs> bro. Just out here, all right. He's Trent Alexander. A lot of people think his initials are TAA. It's actually BBL. <laughs> Okay. You I thought you were going to say ASS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, did you know his grandmother dated Sir Alex Ferguson? I did hear that. Yeah. I did not know that. Sir Alex Ferguson was watching. He's like, damn, the whole family got out of that. <laughs> everybody, everybody caked up. up yeah. All right. Last one. Last one. Christian, you're going to be very excited about this one. Junior Firpo has switched his national allegiance from Spain to the Dominican Republic. Let's go. Vamos. Ojalá que llueva café en el campo. Let's go. Yo. <laughs> Bro, CONCACAF is where it's at right now, huh? Because this was, uh, we, we saw this, is uh, the tweet from uh, Edgar uh, Moreno, CONCACAF, ed at CONCACAF ed Edgar on Twitter. And it says, FIFA has officially approved Junior Firpo's uh, a switch from Spain to Dominican Republic. And then also in this tweet, it says, Meanwhile, Mariano Diaz uh, is in current talks over accepting a caller from the upcoming camp. Let's go. Everybody's coming back for the Olympics. For the Olympic. Dominican Republic qualified for the Olympics. So they were gonna be playing in Paris. And now the, the, the Dominicanos are like, okay, let's go. We get to a free trip to Paris. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 Paris. Do we all get to go? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh Palevu. Let's go, ding, ding, everybody. Ding. Hey, hey, that's a tight five, folks. Let's go. Shout out to Mark Norman closing out the show. Uh, all right. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Another Hot episode of the Cooligans. Another amazing. Yeah, Cooligans shout out. Episode. Enjoy, um, uh, you know, enjoy MLS Cup. Unfortunately, we have confirmed we we cannot. Yeah, be there. we won't be able to be there. We but we'll be there in spirit. Yeah. Exactly. Follow I, along on social media. We're gonna be live tweeting, posting on Instagram a bunch. Like, just follow us this weekend. We got a ton of MLS Cup coverage. Yes, and, and let's tell them the truth. You guys are our fans. The reason we can't go is MLS has actually restricted our ability to go because <laughs> they heard we were laughing too hard. Uh, <laughs> hey, which you can't do. You cannot. Rules do that. are rules. Okay. Don Garber called us directly. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> But the uh, yeah, so MLS Cup. Um, uh, enjoy, obviously, all the Columbus fans. I know there's been a lot of issues with tickets and mm -hmm. and, and and problem. I think a bunch of like um, I don't know if scalpers necessarily bought up a bunch of tickets and yeah, like of course. fans couldn't buy them. So I think this Columbus, is a good, this is a step in the right direction for MLS. It was a time where the scalpers yeah, yeah. didn't even want this. <laughs> like uh, I can't, I can't yeah. give these. Like, I got yeah. forty. Do you want <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. one? You take one, please. <laughs> there's the, the what the, the joke? I, I broke into the car and and left. Pair of jet <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's kind of one of those things. Uh, but no, uh, so enjoy that, and I hope uh, the, the Columbus Crew fans uh, have a good time at home, as well as the LAFC fans with whatever kind of whatever restrictions you got guys got to deal with. Uh, but enjoy; it's going to be a, a dope final. Uh, I I, w I will not be there, but I will be in DC at Tom's uh, Watch Bar uh, to to uh, for a Bundesliga Super Match Day. Uh, so that morning, uh, there will be uh, on December 9th. Uh, if you're in DC, uh, come out to uh, Tom's Watch Bar. You can uh, RSVP. I have the link on on our on Twitter, on Instagram, and stuff like that. Go so, to this. This is gonna be dope. So uh, I, I know there's already a couple people, even in uh, in Gully Squad, that are gonna be coming through. So uh, yeah, if you're in DC and want to watch some Bundesliga in the morning, Tom's Watch Bar, uh, come through. It starts at uh, doors open at 8:30 a.m. Um, all right. The uh, and and as always, make sure you join the Patreon. Like uh, the way fans had asked questions to Julian Gressel. Uh, that's, that's how, how you get access. That's how you get it. So, so patreon.com slash soccer and there's Cooligans. some inexpensive options to join yeah, uh, yeah. Golly Squad. go for it all right so we'll be back next week enjoy uh wild weekend in footy so it should be fun so we'll be back on monday uh you know uh doing uh a more analysis uh everybody oh geez we've just been fined half a million dollars by mls <laughs> love you guys we'll see you there peace <laughs>